Until recently, the official American policy of plausible deniability, distraction, and public dissuasion regarding UFOs was now more than 50 years old. This policy was supported by nearly all politicians, Pentagon officials, and members of the media, regardless of their political or religious affiliation. The policy began to emerge in 1942, due to the increasing numbers of military encounters with UFOs during World War II. However, the policy didn't achieve its mandate until the year 1952, as dramatically growing numbers of UFO sightings worldwide were viewed by a range of responsible American leaders as the beginning of a possible alien invasion. In 1952, during the month of July, many of the world's newspapers reported that dozens of strange, spherical, glowing, unidentified aircraft were sighted by hundreds of eyewitnesses above the nation's capital. These objects had registered on radar as they flew over Washington DC and F-94 jets were scrambled to intercept, but they were easily outmaneuvered by the UFOs. The UFOs reportedly were loitering in the area for many hours through the night on at least two occasions and were able to appear and disappear mysteriously at will. There were very few photographic images taken of those events, but they are impressive. And yet, when those strange, glowing, unidentified aircraft returned again exactly 50 years later in July 2002, only a few media sources reported a brief but failed UFO intercept by F-16s. Most Americans had no idea that this was just the tip of the iceberg. In fact, the events that occurred during 2002 were even more enigmatic than those of 1952 because of the incredibly clear, high-resolution, nighttime photographs that were taken. Colour images captured on high-speed film by a professional photographer show conclusively that during the month of July 2002, on the 4th and 16th, there were a number of UFOs flying over the restricted airspace of the Capitol Building and the Washington Monument. And as incredible as it sounds, they provide evidence that on July 16th, UFOs encircled and landed on the Capitol building roof and the surrounding park area late that night. Here's what happened. On July the 16th at approximately 12.30 a.m., a professional photographer from Washington, D.C. was shooting an album cover for a recording artist using the reflecting pool and Capitol building as a background. Based on the photographer's testimony and the two images that he took, there were no other people on the Capitol building grounds at that time. However, what is clear from these two images is that there were at least five UFOs that penetrated restricted airspace in that location. At least two of these vehicles actually landed for a brief period. As that was occurring, one of the other UFOs entered the reflecting pool and submerged while yet another UFO hovered nearby over the water, emitting an eerie-looking energy field that reflected light beneath it. After taking the two pictures in front of the Capitol building, the DC photographer then moved to a different location on the edge of the Capitol building's lower Senate Park. He estimates that 20 minutes elapsed before he took the next and final shot of the evening the image's exposure time was 3.5 minutes. Hovering in the sky, just above a commercial building, there are a number of UFOs, some grouped in a triangular formation. Near the ground, there are two UFOs in the distance. However, floating in the air in front of the DC photographer, there are two oval-shaped, semi-transparent spheres of energy that he believes were UFOs equipped with some type of advanced optical stealth device. The amount of alien activity that took place that night was mind-boggling. The large formation of UFOs parked above the building emitted a strange energy. The highly complex signature of their energy fields was clearly captured on the film due to the long exposure time and their close proximity to the camera. Just prior to leaving the area, the UFOs generated a wormhole in space. Unfortunately, this incredible image came at a price. 
the DC photographer's fingers were burned by radiation and took about a year to heal. During one of our conversations he explained, I was positioned underneath these objects and according to my images they warped out or whatever they did and went back to wherever they came from in the time of that exposure. At that point there is an image that shows a center set of UFO formations in lateral and upward motions. I felt that I was caught in the thrust of something, like I was hit by a mist, but there wasn't any moisture. Soon after that I noticed I had very fine pinhole sized burns in my fingernails, and my arms felt like they were charged with some kind of energy. More UFO sightings in 2002-3. Just 10 days later on July 26, 2002, Fox News correspondent Shepard Smith reported, the nighttime skies over the nation's capital came alive with blue and orange lights streaking across the sky. So say a lot of panicked people who called into a radio station. No joke here. American fighter jets in hot pursuit, NORAD, North American Aerospace Defense, confirmed to Fox News that two F-16s did scramble but found nothing. It's fair to say, Shepard, that there are a lot more questions than answers at this point, but something strange was going on in the Maryland night sky. Here is what we know. At 1am the folks at NORAD saw something they couldn't identify in Maryland airspace, not far from the nation's capital, restricted airspace. The track it was taking caused them some concern, so they scrambled two DC Air National Guard jets to check things out. Now, DC Air National Guard confirms that two F-16s from the 113th Wing were vectored to intercept whatever it was that NORAD was worried about. However, when the pilots got where they were supposed to be, they said they didn't see anything when they arrived on the scene. NORAD would not provide details about the exact location, direction or speed of the object they were tracking. One witness told the radio station that the jets were right on its tail. As the thing would move, a jet was right behind it. An investigation is underway, but National Guard spokesman Captain Sheldon Smith said, We don't have any information about funny lights. Shepard will continue to watch for this. Meanwhile, that same night, a father and son in Arlington, Virginia, had gone outside to get their cat off a ledge outside a second floor window around 1.15 a.m. They were both looking up at the side of the house, wondering how to get their cat down, when two circular white lights flew over their house. They estimated the UFOs were about the size of a baseball held at arm's length. The UFOs were visible for about two minutes before moving off, but soon came back again. This time both UFOs stopped close by, and that was when the father and son realized the spheres were small. Both UFOs stopped for a second, and then one of the objects flew away at a right angle to its previous path of flight. The other object remained motionless for about five seconds, before continuing on pretty much its original direction. There were two separate objects flying in tandem at first, and then separately. They were clearly under intelligent control. Four months later, on November 11, 2002, the DC photographer captured another amazing nighttime photograph of a small UFO. This object was a metallic sphere about the size of a golf ball that silently defied gravity, before swiftly moving off. One year later, in November 2003, Fox News reported that Air Force fighter jets had once again been scrambled and that the White House had briefly been evacuated on November 20th after birds, or possibly disturbances in the atmosphere, tripped radar that keeps watch on restricted airspace around the complex. According to Fox News, Federal Aviation Administration spokesman William Schumann said, It's a false radar target. When the NORAD fighters got to the location of the alleged violation, they found nothing. Schumann explained how flocks of birds or atmospheric disturbances 
might have caused the false radar reading, which was initially thought to be a plane flying within five miles of restricted airspace around the White House. So, should we just forget what happened in 1952 and again in 2002 and 2003? The big question regarding this ongoing alien incursion of restricted airspace is, at what point does a UFO or swarm of UFOs represent a threat to national security? Clearly, a two-seater Cessna aircraft is considered a threat to national security. Why not a UFO? Perhaps it is because UFOs have not taken any overt hostile action towards us, yet. But by the mid-1950s, having studied the matter for years, the US government had concluded that the public's potential to panic due to waves of UFO sightings was the only clear and present danger to national security. And thus began the official denial, distraction and dissuasion regarding this matter.